Right, the piece of timber has been cut on a bandsaw and so it leaves the edges a bit rough with so, um, splinters sticking out. So what I need to do is to sand the edges just to make them safe. It's going across at an angle. Um, later on we may need to sand the sides to get them smooth but we'll leave those for the moment. The next thing I'm going to do is to find the centre so I can put my ruler across the corners and using a faint pencil just draw a faint line across to find the centre. So just diagonally across the corners, the two lines, that gives me the centre. And later on I'll draw that. Um, the second thing is if you were going to put your design on. Now my design is quite simple, I just want to cut the corners off and to get it even I'm going to measure in from each corner the amount that I want to do. In my case it's 20 millimeters. So there's my center and there are the corners that I want to remove. Right, we're now at the pillar drill. I've got my goggles on, I've got my tie tucked back, anything loose tucked back. Um, at the front of the pillar drill there is a threaded bar with a couple of nuts on. This has been adjusted so the drill will only go down so far. If you look down below that means that when I pull the drill handle around, the drill only goes down so far. That's important so we get the hole cut the right depth on the piece of wood. We can line up the centre drill with the centre of the wood and then we need to adjust the clamps so we can clamp it down. There is a bolt at the end that can be adjusted so that when you feed the toggle clamp down, it will clamp your work. You hear the click, that's it toggling into place and locking it. You just need it tight enough so that with your thumb and finger you can clip it into place. If you're having to put your weight on it, you're using too much pressure. Like normal, the pillar drill has the isolator down at the bottom that needs turning on before it will turn on at the green button and then you have the red button at the foot button to stop it if you need to. Because the drill is quite a big diameter drill, I don't want to drill down in one go. I'm going to drill and release and drill and release. So I'll turn the isolator on, turn the drill on, and then slowly the first the drill the first drill provides a center for it, and then the hole cutter comes down and then you cut in, out, in, out, in, out. And when I get to where the nuts are, I can't go down any further. I can put it up, stop the drill, wait for the spinning to stop. Thumb and forefinger again, just underneath the clamps for the toggle clamp. Tap off the dust and there is the center cut. So it's the groove for the aluminium to fit in. So having drilled the hole, I now want to cut my corners. This is a bench hook. Um, at the moment, it's a left-handed one. If I flip it over, it becomes a right-handed one. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to use that. This tag fits in the vise, tighten it up, and it can't move. Place your wood in the corner, and if your hands are big enough, the palm of your hand goes on there, your fingers wrap around the back, and it's an awkward angle that you can start to cut the wood. I'm going to use a tenon saw. It has a big, deep blade, so it will only cut a straight line. I hold the handle with my hand and I quite often put my finger along the side to stop it wobbling side to side. The teeth are very very sharp so once you're cutting you do not need to press down, you just need to cut backwards and forwards. You sometimes need to get a couple of backward strokes done just to create a little groove in the wood and then once that's done you can start to cut. I am not pushing down just backwards and forwards and that will cut off the corner.
if you're not strong enough the wood will move around in which case we can use a G clamp tighten up undo and you can arrange the G clamp to clamp it against the vise like this now it can't move and I can use the saw to cut the corner and I've cut my little corner piece off undo the G clamp and there I have cut it off some of you might be doing wiggly lines we'll get rid of the bench hook I'm going to use a coping saw two hands and I can steer the coping saw as I cut so works clamped in the vise tightly two hands on the coping saw coping saw blades there um, if you look carefully at the blade, I don't know if it focuses, but it'll either cut in one direction or the other and you just need to be cutting in that direction. It won't cut in the opposite one. Again, a couple of backward strokes to get it cutting and then two hands and I can cut it. As I'm cutting, I can steer the blade. I'm not pushing too hard, it's quite slow. If the blade gets in the way, there are the two tangs and the handle. If you hold one of the tangs, you can undo the handle, push the tangs to get the bow at a different angle, and then do the handle up again. So now they can get round at a tighter angle. One more loop, whoops, off the tops. And you can see that I've cut a funny angle.